Welcome to another episode of Money and Medicine. I'm your host, Werner Hutting, and with me in the studio is the co-founder, Stefan Botma. This episode is specifically dedicated to the healthcare workers who at some stage in their career has been faced with unemployment, as well as to future medical doctors who want to prepare for the eventuality of facing potential unemployment in the future. Firstly, we're going to look at what are some of the preventative measures that you can put in place to sort of set yourself up and help you navigate unemployment if heaven forbid you are faced with that at some stage in the future. And then secondly, we're going to look at some of the components um, that you can implement or some of the measures that you can implement immediately to help you lighten the burden in the event of unemployment. So Vander, maybe if you don't mind, let's unpack the first part and let's start with an emergency fund. I know that is a cliche, um, but why is an emergency fund so important, specifically starting day one as an intern? Stefan, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on. So especially when we meet with a new client in terms of the strategy that we follow with them is we always advise the client to first and foremost start of an emergency fund before they start of any other investment. We've seen over the last couple of years, that there's a number of doctors that's unfortunate that does not have the security of getting placement after either internship where, they, where there's some sort of delay in terms of placement of ComServe. Uh, and especially this year, we've seen that it's many students or, or let's not necessarily say students, but where there's a lot of uh, ComServe doctors that didn't get placement for um, being a medical officer. Yes, and I think an emergency fund is sometimes also um, a lot of people overthink what should an emergency fund look like. So, you know, typically when I approach like an investment firm, a wealth manager, I think what we've seen is something that works effectively is a simple savings account through your bank. Uh, you know, especially if you've partnered with a private banking institution, they offer savings accounts that is immediately accessible. The fees are you know, virtually nothing. Um, and it's something that can pay into like a couple of seconds, it's into your banking account. It's quite easy because you can also navigate your your monthly contributions. You don't have to commit to a fixed contribution. So if you've got a month where things were a little bit leaner, you can actually allocate and just steer your surplus that is available in your, uh, in your account over into the emergency fund. And do that for two years, three years, you'll have a massive amount of money. You'll at least try to get to a point where there's three to six months um, of your monthly expenses put away for a rainy day. Now, I think the biggest mistake a lot of these um, doctors make is they think that if I can't put away, let's say, a thousand or two thousand rand a month, they don't do it at all. So yeah. they just leave it at, and they don't contribute at all. I think it's important to just put away something. Whatever you can put away, just put it away. Yeah. Because if you're not going to be successful in putting away, let's say, two to th or three to six months' salary, um, Putting away something is going to help you to a certain extent uh, and it's going to take away some pressure when, when, that, when that happens. One of the other mis mistakes, um, for the lack of a better term, that I, that I see a lot of doctors make is they, they commit to long-term contractual agreements. Um, you know, buy properties as an intern, which is which is not wrong, especially if property is part of your, of your wealth creation strategy. But if you committing to a long-term asset commitment, repayment, whatever you want to call it, such as a property, then obviously you've got to make sure that you can manage that risk in the event of unemployment. They also commit to, I'm using something as simple as a cell phone contract. You know, if you commit to a cell phone contract, that thing will have to be paid. And the last thing you want, I think especially you can maybe elaborate on this as, a, as, a, as an ex-attorney, is judgments against your name, you know, having a bad credit score. We've done a lot of uh, work on credit scores and what it means. Um, what would it look like if someone is, is in a situation where they can't, you know, afford these monthly contributions? So, so typically what would happen is if you look at any contractual agreement that you entered to, so let's use a the financing of a car as a, as a simple example. So typically you finance a car either over a five-year or a six, in, in some instances people finance it over a seven-year period. The problem is you're committing yourself to repaying that car over that specific period. Um if you get into a situation where after two years of internship or after your commissary in, in the third year, you don't get placement within the government and you don't have that job security, the bank is not going to feel sorry for you. They're not going to, to pit you over the fact that you haven't, um, that you are unemployed. Yeah. Okay? You are still going to have to be able to repay um, the car installment. So typically what would happen is if you default on, on that car installment, um, they're going to send you a letter of demand. They're going to tell you, listen, um, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client, um, you are in default. Um, you've missed a an installment. 
we're going to take a double debit in the month thereafter. And if you continue to fail to repay um, that repayment commitment, at some stage, they're going to hand it over to an attorney. Now, that's what you want to avoid. Because once they hand it over to an attorney, the attorney is going to institute legal action against you. And if you fail to, for instance, uh, defend that legal action successfully, which is in a lot of uh, cases um, actually the situation because it's very expensive, they're going to repossess your car. So they're going to come to your place of residence or they're going to come to your place of work um, if you file employment at a later stage. um, And they're going to take the vehicle back from you. The problem is they're going to sell that vehicle on auction uh, at a minimal cost, okay, just to, to to get some of their money back, and you will have a judgment against your name. Now, that's going to affect a lot of things. As you know, it's going to affect the credit score. It's going to basically uh, affect your entire financial portfolio going forward. Um, that regard. Okay, so so the opposite of obviously, you know, not going into too many fixed commitment contractual relationships is flexibility and something that i normally recommend especially when we start working with interns is always look for investments insurance type of products that offer that form of flexibility i'm using a simple example some platforms offer you one maybe two premium holidays on a long-term investment so if you've got a retirement annuity with company a and first of all if you if you if you need to apply for a premium holiday in my point of view i think you're already in the wrong vehicle uh your new generation um linked sort of they call it like lisps or you know investments that is that is fee based very very flexible as you can literally just seize those premiums temporarily so or you can just you know stop it for time being and then by the press of a button or by the you know just authorization um on your on your online uh, platform you can literally just reintroduce your premiums so most of the of the call it the all generation retirement annuities long term you have to apply for um, a premium holiday which um is if you do it more than once or twice you'll then have to make that policy unpaid or that investment unpaid which is or paid up is another word they use and that can then lead to to penalties so very important to look at flexibility i think from an insurance perspective as well you do deal with some companies that don't allow a premium holiday on all your products yeah. so for example what they'll do is they'll offer you a, a, a premium holiday on your life cover but not on your income protection so also make sure that when you enter into that agreement with that company that you ask them what is the extra strategies look like i know a company um not to to name any names but there's some companies that that offered like financial support in the form of some of their bonus structures or in the form of some of them of, of their profit share remuneration where they could actually support you and guide you through tough times which is a phenomenal benefit so this is very very important when you enter into agreements is to make sure what is my exit strategy do i have flexibility in the financial services uh, industry definitely no i can't agree more and and we've seen it uh, i've seen it typically i've seen it this year and a very important thing to ask the financial advisor that, that assists you for portfolio is how long does this benefit need to be in place before I can actually apply for this yes, holiday. Yes. Uh, because I just recently um, reached out, the client reached out to me, so we took over the portfolio and she had a benefit with a specific company in place. And when we wanted to assist her with a premium holiday, the benefit hasn't been in place for 12 months yet. Uh, and they came back and they said, but the benefit needs to be in place for at least 12 months when, before she can apply for a premium holiday. Another thing that we, that we, that we look into, especially just I always believe in proper planning prevents poor performance is to continuously try to stay ahead of the curve. You know, what preventative measures can you put in place? And self-development is is paramount as, a, as an intern. And some of our clients do postgraduate qualifications. What does that look like? And what does it look like, like practically? How can you continue to improve yourself just to outwit uh, your, your peers, um, competitors, people in the market to make sure that you can actually secure uh, the jobs in the future. Well, there's a number of things that you can do. So I know in the medical space, there's a lot of different courses that you can do. And we would actually highly, highly encourage, um, especially interns, guys that's busy with ComServe, to go look into those courses because it's eventually when you sit up in a situation where you are unemployed, that that's great courses to have on your CV. So if you have to look at um, doing some local work in a private space, is that's going to give you an edge above the, the, the person just next to you. So if you are faced with unemployment, what's the next steps? The very first thing is if you've got a financial portfolio in place, is I would say reach out to the insurance company and see if there's any form of premium holiday available. Because what that would do is that premium holiday would allow you to seize your benefits 
for a specific period in time where you don't have to contribute to that specific benefit. So it's going to help you with some cash flow. Um, unfortunately, there are T's and C's applicable to it. So as you would know, um, let's say, for instance, you take a premium holiday. You don't have to pay the premium, but that doesn't mean you're still going to be covered. So in the event that something happens to you, you won't be able to claim on that benefit. The benefit <laughs> of taking a premium holiday is the fact that when you want to reinstate the policy and you want to continue with the premiums again, you don't have to go through medical underwriting. So you don't face the risk of having to go through blood test, maybe having a pre-existing condition excluded. So all your medical should still be in line. Yeah, and I think that's important because something can happen in this year or six months of unemployment. Uh, and then as you mentioned, or as you alluded to, if you want to reinstate, then there's exclusions, these medical loadings, and you don't get the same terms than what you got when you were still young and healthy. So crucial. Um, bringing me back to my point on flexibility. If you are on a platform where premium holidays are sensitive, still ask, ask your financial advisor, can I apply for a premium holiday on my long-term investments? Remember, this is just, it's just a, a, a temporary phase that you're going through it's not it's not the the definite forever uh, you can always reintroduce it in the future if you're on a more flexible platform the likes of you know the new generation fee-based type of models then it's easy you just you just seize it and you reintroduce it as and when you you want to um and in, a, a third point and you and you're welcome to maybe add to this is partner with the right recruitment strategy or, or, or partner with the right recruiters rather um, when you when you basically face with unemployment. There's a lot of opportunity in the private space as well. Eh? We've seen our clients that actually went through this transition going from ComServe where they had a point, am I going to stay in government, whether it's uh, from their own decision, whether they want to go private or not. Um, but part of a recruitment agency, I think there's phenomenal recruitment agencies out there, especially in the GP market. So there's there's a lot of recruitment agencies that actually place you um, as a locum with a lot of different GP groups. For example, yeah. I know one of my clients are currently working at HealthWorks, one of the HealthWorks groups, um, and he purely got that placement due to the recruitment agency. Mm. And I've got a, I've got a gentleman, he, he did his uh, diploma in anesthesia, so he did a DA, and this was during his training years, unfortunately also got faced with, with unemployment, no posts available in government. And it ended up just, you know, being in the right space, being in the right network. It ended up him assisting another anesthetist um, and then got to the point where he's currently doing a lot of work, basically as a medical doctor, but doing anesthetic work in that space and making making good money. Um, and just, you know, he's obviously hustling and obviously doing a lot of a lot of hard work as a, as I call it, an anesthetist. But... It's just that opportunity came to play and I don't think, I don't see him at least um, based on our last conversation, I don't see him going back into government. So that opportunity opened up and he basically grabbed him with both hands. But again, he, he planned yeah. and then when the opportunity came, he was partnered with the right, with the right team, the right recruiter and the opportunity came and he, and he seized that, that opportunity. The other thing is uh, you, have to, you have to reassess your budget. I think when you get into a position where there's no job security, is how important is it to reassess your budget? Budget is such a cliche. A lot of people, when you talk budget, it's like, I've heard this many a times. Um, I'm already faced with unemployment, so there's no income. It's, you know, what do I look at? My first recommendation is assess what you currently have and what you're currently doing. So take three months, bank statements. Bank statements is your personal financial statements. So if you should look at yourself as a business, that's basically your, it shows us everything. So take three months of your bank statements, sit with a trusted partner, sit with a mentor, with a financial advisor, with you, with what, maybe your parents if they're financially inclined, sit with someone that can just show you the blind spots. Ask you, why are you spending so much on this? Or why are you using this? Take three months and start making notes on that, like print it out, make notes on the, on the statements, and then see where can you cut the fat? What can you reduce? What can you remove? Prior to this episode, we spoke about gym. You know, gym has become is something that's actually become quite expensive. Maybe seize your gym contract for a year or for two years and start jogging or start doing, you know, some, some, some body weight type of exercises. Um, look at your grocery budget. You know, I did an episode where we spoke about just breaking that up in a weekly. And we, we applied this on my, on my own personal budget. Is where What we did is we went from a monthly budget on groceries to a weekly budget. It also helps you to get those small victories. You know, if your weekly budget is whatever, 1,500, 2,000 rand, um, 
and you make that 2,000 rand for the week, there's something in it, you know, that emotional victory that I was within my budget. And it helps you to, if you went slightly over, to then say, well, I need to trim it down in the week to come. Um, big believer of 22-7. So we've seen the power of 22-7. I think a lot of people underestimate 22-7 is that they don't link their accounts to 22-7, but it's invaluable. If you actually just register for 22-7, even if you don't take the effort to categorize all the spending, but if those transactions are just being captured there, it's phenomenal to just actually go there. And it's very valuable. It can give you a lot of guidance in terms of what are priorities and where can you get. Where are you spending too much? On the last note, I think continue to keep your CV updated, continue to network, continue to put yourself out there and make sure that if the opportunity then comes to play, then you're the first person on their minds. Um, you know, talk to some of your colleagues in the private space, talk to some of your colleagues in the government sector, make sure that you continue to network. I think the biggest mistake that you can make, and I'm saying this very respectfully, is to play victim and just to crawl in a corner and wait for someone to reach out to you. I think you got to, you got to be the person to make that decision and go out and grab, you know, life by the horns. Yeah, and I want to add on that. I want to actually encourage everyone and say, listen, unemployment is nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, don't, don't be afraid to speak about it. Don't be afraid to speak up about it. If you need assistance, if you need a guidance for someone to actually assess your current financial situation, just to act as a soundboard, someone to speak to. Mm. Um, because I know quite often it, you might feel embarrassed to speak to a family member about it, but speak up. Hey? It's nothing to be embarrassed about, especially if it's not within your control. Uh, yeah. get a trusted source that can actually guide you and take some of that pressure off you so if if you're watching this episode you found it useful go to the bottom of this page write some comments give us some feedback see how we can improve money and medicine was born with a vision the vision is simple it's to educate empower and edify medical doctors to make better financial decisions we've seen for too long that medical doctors are exposed especially when it gets to financial decisions They've got a massive target on their back because nowhere in your six-year degree, if you specialize your 10-year degree, are you ever exposed to financial terminology? So, so how do you expect to make informed decisions? It's like going to the gym and just trying to bench 200 kilograms. Obviously, you're not going to do it. So that's why Money in Medicine was created, and that's why we were formed. Join us on social media. Check out our website on www.moneyandmedicine.coza um, and make sure to subscribe to this page for future content. Until next time. Plan the plan.